the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, orders the courtesies be extended by its officers to essential service providers in all states. But will it change anything? And as COVID-19 cases in Nigeria nears 7,000, Benue and Cross River governors orders religious organizations to resume activity. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has directed all officers of the force to extend due courtesies to essential service providers in all states across the country. He also ordered force personnel deployed to enforce the 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew in the country to respect fundamental rights of medical practitioners, journalists, and other essential workers, and all citizens. And joining us to discuss this is Francis Fadjiyile, President of the Nigerian Medical Association via Skype, and also Dipo Alayoku, a journalist via phone. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show tonight. Thank you very much. Good evening. Now, Mr. Francis, I'm going to go with you. Um, because this borders directly on your brief. With, with the myriads of reports you were getting about the, the possibility of your men, doctors across the country being harassed, how did this come out to you? And what was your thought and reaction to it? Well, uh, first reaction to this is indifference. Because it is not expected in the first instance that the inspector of police of Nigeria to have come out with an order not being able to, uh, to uh, state that some people are exempted. It is a common norm that medical officers, uh, medical health officers are usually exempted in terms of uh, crisis, even at war. And the uh, presidential task force had repeatedly when they have been uh, talking about lockdown and uh, curfew, uh, re-emphasized that essential workers, journalists, and some other group of people are exempted. So it's not a, it's not it's not a directive that anybody should uh, be sharing or be happy about. It is the minimum that people at that level ought to know, and I think that directive was uh, the initial directive was ill-advised and, in fact, very disappointing. So we are indifferent to what he has said. Uh, let's, let's, start, let's start from the beginning, and, and that's to the journalists. Let, let's start from the beginning. The president had, in his first COVID-19 address to the nation on March 29, exempted health workers, journalists as well as staff of telecommunication companies from the lockdown. And he also did the same in his second COVID-19 on April 13. Now, what do you think would have given the Inspector General of Police, Mohamedou Adamu, such powers to want to override a directive by Mr. President? In our mind, that who gave that order and on whose authority is he making it a flat uh, restriction for everybody? Do you know how many lives were lost? on that single day due to that uh, very ill-fated directive? Do you know the catastrophe that it has caused? Do you know the pains it has given to people, it has, it has uh, 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 people had had because of those directives? I think by now Nigerians and the hierarchy of government should be asking the Inspector General of Police to come and explain who gave him the order that he has, uh, the directive that he has sent all out. So I, I don't think it's a matter that should be swept under the carpet. M Mr. Digbo, <laughs> I need your response to that also. I mean, a directive was given, executive order directive from the president, and here we have the IGO police coming out to give a counter directive to that of the president. How, how do you react to this, and what does this really portend for us as a nation? Yes, yes, thank, yes. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think there's need for us to situate this thing within the social perspective. The first uh, issue was the issue of uh, restrictions of movement. Eventually, some people on essential services were exempted. 
That was the situation for the first four months, four weeks. And when we, we had the second phase, it has to do with the court rule that uh, was supposed to commence by 8 o'clock. I think that was where the problem arose. The distinction between the institution of the first four weeks and then the second stage, which was just the coffee after the distribution of lockdown was eased. And uh, you remember how this thing started that people were identified. Just like eventually, you know, when the president first made the announcement, workers in the bank were not mentioned. But within 24 hours, they were included. And don't forget that the many Nigerians accused security agents of thwarting the efforts of government within during the first four weeks of lockdown, that they were allowing a lot of people to breach the law or the pronouncement. So that was on the basis of that, that the IG called on the people that the Nakatasi Kohatichi will look at the first weeks of lockdown should not be allowed to creep into the second stage, which was just the first week. It is very, very unfortunate that there was a, what I would call misunderstanding here. Because uh, if you look at the Nigeria Constitution, apart from the Minister of Justice, the only other profession or professionals that were mentioned in this Constitution were the additionalists of President, as you well have it in Section 22. And unfortunately, many of our security agents. We know they are set back. We know the way they reason. Another has been given, nobody comes out, nobody goes in after 8 o'clock. I think it is very, very good that the matter has been resolved. The IG had made the categorical statement that even the issue of curfew covers journalists and people on essential duty. Uh, I think that's exactly what we need to do. How do we need to get something? Mr. Laoyoku, let me, let me interject you here now. I hear you when you say there's, there was probably, because in what you're trying to say, there, there was probably a breakdown in communication between the office of the IG and the directive given by the president on two separate addresses. Now, prior to the IG's directive, there was no other directive from the presidency stating otherwise. All we got was this new directive from the office of the IG to its men on the street saying journalists, essential workers, and health workers were not exempted from the curfew. Are you saying in legislative orders, um, in executive orders, that the IG was in the stead, in the place of authority to have issued such a directive to override that of the president? That, that, that's why I said that we could Hello? Yes, go ahead. I can hear you. That's the why I said that we need to also take the same thing with the proper perspective. Okay. In the address that the president announced the issue of the doctor and the introduction of the copy, it, it wasn't as clear, as very clear as it was in the first order of lockdown, where people on the social justice were exempted. So, uh, to me, I don't see it as the ID going against. Yeah, if the ID was working, on the basis of what happened in the first phase of the lockdown. Well, I remembered that even the PTA, that the president had forced, in one of their regular briefings, mentioned that they are had Nigerians complaining about the way the services were carrying out their duty in the first phase of the first phase, and that they are going to get across to the by GC because there was so much pressure on the security agents. That some of the lapses we saw in the first phase, which was the first four weeks of the lockdown, we were taking, we were, we were, we were blamed on them. And that was why the matter was raised about the PTF people's briefing every day. So it was not even so that, that perhaps they had called on the IG that it should rain it with his people so that it should not allow the court people to go the way of the first week of the lockdown. All right, let, let, Mr. Uh, yeah. let, me, come, let me come to Mr. Francis Fadouille. I'll, I'll come back to you, Mr. Um, Olayoku. Mr. Francis Fadouille, do, do you take the stance, do you subscribe to the thoughts of Mr. Olayoku and what he said about the IGES directive? Being the reason well, for what could have happened to, to your men? Well, I want to say that uh, 
this circumstance of the easing of lockdown has no any further direct. Yes. We have had the first phase of the east easing of the lockdown, where it was explicitly stated that the curfew does not involve essential health workers and essential workers, including the journalists and so on. So it could not be uh, substantiated that the IG or the hierarchy of the security is now going to enforce a particular decision that is new. We have had the first phase of the eased lockdown, and we have allowed, they have allowed health workers and medical doctors, journalists and others to work during the time of curfew. What I have seen is that we have our security officers who are not in any way appreciative of the duties of those who are in the frontline workforce. In other climes, we see how they respect nurses, doctors, journalists, and everybody who is involved in this uh, COVID-19 management. It is really unfortunate that even ambulances carrying patients that needed medical attention were confiscated and arrested. Are we not human beings? Don't you know the implication of staying a day, an hour, or a few minutes beyond the necessary time for you to catch up to get medical uh, attention? Look, it is, we have no reason to believe that the security forces was trying to uh, ensure that they became more stringent. Many other malfeasances are going on that are unchecked. Even during the time of lockdown, doctors were harassed, doctors were intimidated. I have told you of a case when a doctor was coming back from call duty in the night and security officers ordered him to sit on the floor, bare floor. Is this a way in which you want to appreciate someone trying as much as possible to preserve life of Nigerians? Mr. Fadile, when, when such harassment happened to men of the Nigerian Medical Association and report gets to you, is, is there, is there a, a process where this kind of harassment complaints can be, can be channeled? And if yes, over time, have, have we seen cases like this tried and any prosecution made? Well, you have to be very careful in the dead of the night to know who you are, uh, you are going to uh, uh, discuss with. It also, it also happened to me. I was invited to a television program, to be, uh, to be specific, NTA Night Live. I needed to be at the station by 10. And I was delayed at a, at a military checkpoint till 10 minutes to 12. They had to call on the IG. They had to call on the hierarchy of the military. In fact, a military general called the officer, and the officer refused, claiming that it is only his commanding officer that can allow him to go, when, allow me to leave. When I showed to him that I am the president of Nigeria Medical Association with my ID card, these are high-handedness on the side of security officers. And what have we done? We have kept appealing to our members for them to see that we needed to take care of the public. We have reported to people in high places, security officers in high places, but rather for us to see a reprieve. What we see is that they go ahead to make things was for us. What had, right. what happened in Lagos two days ago was an eyesore, and it was the height of all the intimidation and harassment that doctors, nurses, and other health workers had faced in this fight 
against COVID-19. We'll, we'll come to that in just a moment, Mr. Fadjirile. Let me go to Mr. Olayoku. Mr. Olayoku, it, it was shocking to see that within the time frame of the IG's directive, it actually did override the, the president's direct directive exempting health workers, journalists, you know, from, from the curfew. Now, in, in, my, in my thoughts, what does this indicate when it comes to our executive orders, and especially orders coming from the presidency? What does it say of us as a people? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get the question. Now, like the time frame between which the directive, the instruction came from the IG of police and to the time of his execution, it happened pretty fast. And it overrode the president's directive, you know, which exempted these essential workers from the curfew. What does this indicate in the executive orders and powers as bestowed upon the presidency in that regard? Uh, don't forget that uh, according to the Constitution of Nigeria, all executive power in the state belongs to the president. I can exercise this power either directly or through the vice president or any officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So it will be very historians for us to expect the IG to override the president. That is exactly what I think we should try to avoid. But we, we, that was that was yeah, similarly that was similarly what happened. That was similarly what happened in the last two days. Wasn't that what similarly happened? No, 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 no. no. Wait, there's need for us to get this thing. There's need for us to get this thing very clear. Please do. When the president issued that directive. The president cannot go out on the road or on the street to enforce it. He will need the security agents through the IG as the lead agency of the police in this era. So uh, if the president has said, okay, copy, and the IG has issued the directive, I, I think the problem now is in the area of interpretation. And again, our guys, security agencies on the road, there's a need for us to understand the sentiment of these people. The vaccinations, many of them are very unfriendly because they believe that why should they be on the road? I'm looking at their sentiment and mentality. Why should they be on the road where people are supposed to be in their houses? And that is exactly why it is very necessary. The way Nigerians have reacted to point it out to the powers that be. But perhaps there is a little misunderstanding from the directive of the president and the way the security agencies are carrying it out. And perhaps that is why the IG has issued another directive, now clarifying that this category of people have been exempted. I, that's why I, see, we want, I still want to draw back to the beginning of this issue, the age of lockdown. Some of us went out as a journalist. Some of us went out as members performing the sexual for duties, like in the ports. Don't forget that people in the ports are also exempted. So that is why there is a need for us not to create a sort of NEC. It's a security agency because at every point in time, the security agencies that have been asked to enforce this law will always come in contact with people like journalists, people like medical personnel, and other people under essential essential duties. It will, not be, it will be out of place for us to create a, a very uh, bad, 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 bad blood sort of between these two groups. All right, Mr. Mr. Lyoko, in, 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 the vein, in the vein of your response, now the Inspector General of Police has since rescinded his order restricting the movement of essential workers amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, when um, Mr. Fadjia was speaking earlier, it was it was it was clamoring for the need for responsibility to be, to be taken for that action. Don't you think we should have some kind of um, report or statement put out by the president in in the light of what happened in the last two days by by men of the security forces, especially particularly the Nigerian police? But, but, but I, I, I don't know what we want to reduce the president to. That's not, I don't like to say president because we are for anyone. Because that is why presidents have people that are working with him. And I'm aware that today this matter came up at the who is a regular presidential briefing. Some of these things are not things that should come from the president. Because I remember that when the issue of abuse of this lockdown came up, it was raised at the PTF celebration by a general, one of our colleagues. And I remember it was the SDL, who happened to be the chairman of the PTF, that responded that they are aware of all these lapses. 
and a lot of compromise on the part of security agents. And that he is even happy that the IGP is a member of this committee, that they would direct some of these things to him. Perhaps these are some of the issues they directed to him. People who have been abused are accusing his people of allowing or compromising what was set out in the lockdown. So uh, the, my concern, because I am a journalist, I legally go out, the, uh, the president of the NMA, Mr. Rakens, also his colleague go out at night. It would not be, it would not be ideal if we create a sort of bad blood between security agencies and some of us. Because we always meet at one point or other. I think if there are issues, there's need for us to solve it amicably so that no group suffers any humiliation for that. I think that should be our concern at our level now. All right, Mr. Fajuri, I come to you with this. Now, the Inspector General of Police has rescinded his order, restricting the movement of essential workers amid the COVID-19 lockdown. And has also directed all officers of the force to extend due court seats to essential service providers in all states across the country, including the FCT, Abuja. Now, I just asked Mr. Um, Olayoku, shouldn't you get some kind of statement from the presidency in regards to what just happened? And then in your own capacity as the enemy president, what are the safeguard measures being put in place, especially for health workers in the times of this pandemic? Thank you very much. As uh, we know some risk we have to face, especially having to treat patients outside the normal working hours and sometimes in the deep of the night. We expected that security officers should show some uh, uh, empathy with the health workers, should show some appreciation by the time you see a doctor or a nurse are coming back from the hospitals or going to the hospitals when they are going to treat a fellow Nigerian as, uh, they, as needed. But what we have found is that they show a lot of uh, uh, disdain to some of us, calling us different names and venting some anger on some of us. And I can tell you, we understand most times, we just allow it to pass, we make co uh, complaints. But the thing that amazed us was that we, are now, we now have a directive from the highest office, which tend to strengthen the hands of men at those places, that yes, they can actually deal with anybody, including doctors and nurses and other heads, workers who are coming deep in the night. And I think it is on that basis that we expected more than the write-up written by the uh, first PRO, that even the IGP needed to come out and apologize to the head force of this country. We should know that we don't have enough head workers in this country to feel that we have we are doing human's job. We are overstressed. We are, uh, we, we are under intense pressure. And even with that, we are trying as much as possible to cope and treat Nigeria. You must also know we have other domestic issues affecting us. For example, FCTA doctors and workers in the Federal Capital Territory have not been paid fully for some months. And yet we have advised that we should continue to treat Nigerians because we are here to take care of the welfare of the people. So what we expected is for them to show love and to show interest in supporting those health workers as well as other essential workers in those places. We give them the due courtesy because we know it's not easy for them to stay in the cold of the night defending us. We appreciate them, but they should not vent their anger or their frustration on those of us who are also doing a legitimate duty. And it is on this that the doctors in Lagos State had uh, rescinded their seat, of, uh, seat at home order, yes. and they have directed that all doctors will continue to be at their duty post. And I think we all need to uh, try as much as possible to examine all directives 
in such a way that we have a humane look or humane outlook in the direction we are churning out. We are here to see that COVID-19 is contained in Nigeria and it's not as if uh, we should be finding ways of making things uh, harder for fellow Nigerians. Thank you very much. Mrs. Francis um, Fadjoyile, on behalf of countless millions of Nigerians, we want to say we appreciate what you and the medical team are doing out there in the fight against COVID-19. Why we understand also that you constantly, daily put yourselves in, in the forefront and could get infected. Despite that, you're still out there doing the job to make sure Nigerians are safe. We want to say we appreciate every one of you on the medical team out there fighting this virus. And we do not take what you do for granted. Thank you very much, Mr. Francis Fadjoyile, for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. Please stay safe. You too, sir. Now, finally, um, if you will, and just quickly, Mr. Olayoku, now I know for sure, as a journalist uh, of repute, you know that even in war situations, those on essential duties, especially health workers and journalists, enjoy free movement. Quickly, if you can, how do we begin to safeguard our right to free movement as essential workers, given the times we're in? Yeah, yeah it's part of the, part of the training that somebody needs to receive exactly when you want to cover situations like this. Because there are certain things you need to do, there are certain precautionary measures you need to take. Uh, any Nigerian that fails to appreciate the doctors and medical workers in this critical situation that we find ourselves is not being fair to them. That is why a lot of Nigerians, in every interaction we have, we give kudos to them. Because it is not very easy. It's not easy. And I am aware that before the three addresses that the president has given, a key prominent mention of the role of the workers, of the health workers. And every press briefing organized by the CPTF, every speaker from the SDF to the Minister of Health, they show appreciation because what these guys are doing is not very easy. Mr. And then for, for our colleague. Yes. Some of these things we are doing, if not for us, nobody will know what is happening in the COVID-19 scene. So we also give kudos to our police because Mr. it is not Mr. easy. Mr. Dickwell, I have to let you so go now. Th thank you very much. Mr. Dickwell, thank you very much for joining our us. Are out there. We're out of time. I need so to I let you go now. To Mr. Dickwell Olayoku, thank you very much for joining us on yes. the show tonight and for your contribution. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for staying with us. In our next discussion, churches and mosques are resuming activities in some states, regardless of the fact that Nigeria has almost 7,000 cases. We will be right back.